So good morning again. Uh, my name is Piotr Rutkowski uh, from uh, Marek Podolska Curie National Research Institute of Oncology. I will have a great pleasure to uh, lead the session about the implementation of the national cancer plans in Central and Eastern Europe. And uh, we'll start from uh, the second talk of Professor Konrad Rizinski, who was uh, introduced in the previous session. Uh, I would like to mention only that uh, Professor uh, Rizinski is a former past director, director general of the uh, Notary Institute of Occupational Medicine in Poland, however, is a full member of the EU Mission for Cancer Board, and it will be the topic, uh, topic of his talk, so Mission on Cancer Implementation Plan. So, Professor Rizinski, the first talk is yours. And the uh, question and answers uh, uh, session is at the end of this session. So uh, we are collecting the questions also so from online. So thank you. Thank you very much, Professor uh, Rutkowski. I would like also uh, note that I have to leave uh, immediately after this talk because I have an online meeting of the mission board oh, okay. uh, starting at two. So I have to reach which uh, in a appropriate time. So if there will be any question after my talk, I'll be grateful to, uh, to answer uh, right after. So uh, I, have to, I, have to, I have to modify a little bit my presentation because uh, in fact, um, uh, former uh, speakers uh, uh, presented some of the uh, implementation plan so uh, let me start from uh, uh, from the uh, mission on cancer uh, web program uh, in the chapter 12 is about the calls uh, for mission so um, the first call uh, preparing uncan european initiative to understand cancer was just closed on the on the 20th of october so we are working. Uh, we are waiting for the uh, for the um, uh, results of this call. But there is uh, there is the upcoming call, upcoming calls, uh, which will be open on twenty second of uh, December with a deadline of twenty sixth of April, and uh, the, there will be three calls. The the first one. Uh, very important uh, for people working on uh, screening and cancer uh, and error detection is development of new methods and technologies for cancer screening and error detection. Uh, and, uh, it's very, um, very brief description of what this is uh, all about. This is very important because um, without progress in the uh, new methodologies and uh, techniques in early detection and, and uh, screening, uh, it would be very difficult to achieve the goal um, uh, which was uh, presented in my first presentation. So uh, we look for the uh, faster, more precise, personalized, affordable, and accessible uh, methods and technologies for every screening and cancer uh, and every detection. And the second uh, call will be um, uh, development and validation set of quality of life and uh, patient preference measures for cancer patients and survivors. Uh, this is also a very important uh, topic. Uh, because there is a general feeling that uh, uh, for cancer patients and survivors, we have uh, we have largely unmet uh, needs. We have uh, we 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 have, we will have a lot of unknowns. So uh, to measure uh, the uh, progress uh, in improving quality of life, as it is in the goal uh, for 2030 uh, in the fight against uh, cancer, extremely difficult is to have the new metrics because it's, it's very difficult uh, to, uh, to measure quality of life. So we need a, a really robust and, and, uh, and high, um, highly effective uh, new, new indicators 
for uh, measuring quality of life, the aspects of cancer patients and survivors. Um, and uh, last but not least is uh, better understanding of impact of the risk factors and health determinants on the development and progression of cancer. We are exposed to different risk factors. Uh, that's uh, obvious. Uh, and then uh, it's uh, not all of the risk factors that, that determinants are well understand how they can affect the uh, development and progression of uh, cancer. And this call uh, is looking for the, uh, for the uh, answer to this question. Uh, I would like to mention that uh, overall budget for mission on, on cancer uh, between 2021 and 2030 is 1.2 billion euro. So it's, it's a quite a substantial amount of money for uh, coming from, from research. Uh, mm, mm, then we have a, a Europe meeting cancer plan. Uh, Matthias Schuppe in, in, the, in the very comprehensive uh, presentation show uh, details. I would like to uh, also uh, only remind you that uh, there is a, there is a, a lot of uh, possibilities uh, which uh, um, to, for, for funding, uh, both in uh, research and innovation, uh, digital and personal medicine, reducing inequalities and pediatric cancer in different uh, flagship initiative and, and the plenty of, of action um, planned uh, in the uh, under the beating uh, cancer plan, and the budget is uh, around four billion uh, euro for the whole um, for the whole um, term. Uh, there, there were questions about uh, dealing with data, which is extremely important. We all know that that there will be no progress uh, if we will be not able to share data um, uh, freely uh, within Europe. And uh, under the, the Digital Europe program, it's, uh, uh, it's um, some um, funding reserve. Uh, it, it's uh, difficult to say now how much it will go from this uh, from this budget, the, the, the budget of this uh, this part of the digital euro program is two billion uh, euro, and uh, it is planned that uh, from this program there will be uh, support for digital infrastructure, facilitated uh, access to cancer images. So that was uh, a question. Um, uh, how it will be, uh, how it will be uh, financed. So definitely, there will be call from Digital Europe program to deal with this um, uh, problem, and of course, patient data and, and, and so on and so on, Gen mm -hmm. genomic, because th this is a, it's planned that uh, by the end of the program we will have a, a unif unif uniform a database of at least half a million patients and couples of uh, pairs of patients, uh, healthy people. So it's a great, it's a great challenge. In, in, in. So the other uh, the program, uh, which uh, reserve money for support the, um, the fight against cancer, is uh, Maria Curie Skodowski, uh, Skodowska Curie Actions, uh, Erasmus Plus, and European Institute of Innovation and Technology, EAT Health. Uh, it's uh, expected to provide a minimum of half a million uh, euro for different projects in education, training, um, exchange of scientists. Uh, uh, and uh, research in the field of cancer and promotion of healthy lifestyle. Uh, in, under the EAT Health, 
already there, there was a few calls for innovative approach um, in the field of, of cancer early detection, and it is planned to, uh, to expand this, pro uh, this program. Uh, also, under the um, cohesion policy funds, which are billions, hundreds of billions euro uh, in the budget, there will be possibility, uh, depends on the, on the um, needs of uh, member states, uh, there will be uh, quite a number of money uh, reserved for, for that. And the same for REACTU. React U, this is a, also another program. Uh, uh, and uh, if we look into, into other possibilities, is to recover a, a resilience plan. Plans, this is after COVID 19. Um, uh, the, that's uh, quite a substantial amount of money reserved for. Uh, different actions uh, uh, su supporting recovery from COVID uh, uh, problem. And this is uh, in some countries, in some countries I know, we, we, we were briefed uh, uh, by the um, people who are dealing with this um, uh, recovery resilience plans. For example, in Czechia, uh, they allocate. They are planning to allocate only from this uh, from this program uh, um, hundreds of millions of euro to support oncology institute of institute of oncology. So, so means uh, patient care and therapy uh, infrastructure, but also for some uh, some programs. I, I don't know how it is in in Poland, for example. Well, but we are coming to politics, it's better not to continue. So we have uh, also another possibility, it's technical support instruments. This is mostly for technical, for supporting experts for kind of tuning programs. In the past, some of the um, uh, prevention of the screening programs uh, was financed from this, from this budget, how it will be. Um, in this perspective, um, uh, I don't know. The other source is European Innovation Council, uh, which uh, um, uh, has also budget of uh, uh, dozens of billions euro uh, for different projects, um, very innovative, uh, you know, upfront in, in, in science. It's also a possibility to, to, to apply for, uh, for, the, for this money. And, and the last but not least is European Investment Bank, where uh, you can uh, apply for uh, loans, long-term loans, um, for support, for example, infrastructure, uh, for, for oncology or different, uh, different uh, uh, projects uh, can be can be financed. Uh, you you can uh, go for uh, for uh, web page of the European investment banks for for details. So so summing up, uh, I was uh, I was trying to explain you that um, is, uh, there are a lot of possibilities for for funding. A lot of uh, money potentially allocated for um, our our battle against uh, cancer cancer in Europe, but that's why we have to be we have to organize ourselves to be effective to 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 um, profit from this um, opportunity. Thank you very much for your attention. Are there any specific questions? Probably this was very clear, so thank you and thank you for the presence here. Thank you. Uh, so uh, the next uh, the next talk will be divided by me and Professor Martin Meintrup from our institute. 
It will be about our Polish National Cancer Plan and Cancer Prevention Program in Poland. So I will not focus on the prevention. So Professor Meintrup will follow, follow my talk. So we start from the general general view of, about the about the national national uh, national cancer plan. We have to wait for you. Okay. So thank you uh, again for the possibility for talking about the development. And, uh, Design and priorities of the National Cancer Plan in Poland. And uh, what is interesting, we have this, uh, okay, we have also our room, but at least at least it's uh, online. So uh, probably Poland is one of the last countries uh, in Europe where uh, finally the National Cancer Strategy, Oncological Strategy was implemented at launch because it was uh, prepared in 2019 at the beginning of February last year. The final version was signed by Prime Minister of Poland. And uh, so just before lockdown, so uh, this uh, happens in this. However, we are working hardly to, uh, to uh, manage uh, this strategy. Here you may see uh, the, final, the final document. And we have uh, five areas for a national oncological strategy. First is about this medical staff, not only of course the physicians, but also nurses and all other uh, types of employees which are related to uh, oncological care, like uh, psycho-oncologists, uh, physiotherapists, etc. And uh, the next two points, uh, are in all oncological strategies, so investing education, so I mean prevention, but the education of the citizens, so primary prevention and lifestyle. And the third point is uh, about investing in secondary prevention. The next is about the science and innovation, and the last is in the investing in the cancer care system. So uh, expected results here are uh, decreasing the mortality related to the five indicator kind of the cancer. So the lung cancer, cervical cancer, breast cancer, uh, colorectal cancer, and melanoma. Uh, so uh, it's ambitious, uh, and, uh, but I think that realistic, especially that I will show you uh, the data before pandemia, which we had in uh, increasing, increasing the survival of these cancers of all. Uh, our institute, so uh, Maria Skłodowska Curie National Research Institute of Poland, is responsible for monitoring and coordination of the National Cancer Strategy. And we have, uh, to be honest, continuous, continuous monitoring. However, you may see the quarter uh, meeting uh, uh, this year. So this is first, first quarter of this year, second and third. And what we can see here that the red part is decreasing. So this is the part where we have uh, the largest delay with implementation of uh, our strategy. So it's really uh, continuously improving. And we prepared the opening report of the National Council Strategy based on the existing big data and also uh, the data from National Payer, National Health Fund using some deep learning and uh, neural network because it was uh, not easy to get all this information based on uh, data from, from almost 4 million of patients. And you may see here that almost uh, 85 million contacts with diagnosis of, uh, of cancers in the, in the health system. So uh, finally, uh, we found that with this classifier, we uh, have a very huge compatibility with existing databases, but we are much more up to date. And what we can see, for example, that for breast cancer, we have increased the incidence, also related probably to the improvement of screening, but generally we have steady uh, uh, relative survival improvement. And the same is for melanoma. In melanoma, we predicted 
10 years ago, that would be a huge increase of the new cases and it happens. 2019, you, you see that from 12 to 16, per 100,000 uh, inhibitors and, uh, and uh, uh, relative survival, the increase is also huge. First, probably related to the awareness programs and, and uh, better diagnosis on the of the earlier stages, but also implementation of new therapies, which really impacted on this of this type of cancer. So it's about 14% increase of the overall survival. Uh, what is also uh, important, we prepare the, uh, within our national culture strategy, the uh, report about the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on the cancer care system. So we also can monitor now the data from, uh, from the cancer care system in terms of impact of the COVID-19 pandemia. And uh, what is uh, not surprising, we had a decrease of the new diagnosed cases in Poland, about 15%. Uh, we had a huge in decrease last year, especially during lockdown, you may see uh, the screening programs in psychology and mammography for, uh, for breast cancer and cervical cancer. And uh, uh, generally, a uh, very difference between the regions in Poland, uh, but as, a, as I mentioned, about 50% less. But there are also the difference between the types of the cancer. For example, for lung cancer, we had more than 20 percent less diagnosed cases, probably related to the fact that many pulmonological uh, departments uh, were transformed into COVID uh, hospitals. But for example, for breast cancer, it was much less, about 20 percent decrease because uh, it's relatively easy uh, to diagnose and mostly diagnosed and treated in the oncological centers and comprehensive cancer centers relatively well survived uh, uh, pandemia uh, in terms of efficacy of treatment. And uh, the next point for national oncological strategy is one of the priorities in investing cancer care system. We started the development of diagnostic and therapeutic guidelines in, uh, in this year for several uh, group of uh, cancers. What is uh, important that some of them are prepared by our national experts and some where we had it uh, uh, enough, uh, enough previous previous data. We started cooperation with NCCN, National Comprehensive Cancer Network, for adaptation of this uh, of these guidelines from NCCN to Polish realities, and uh, with help of Alliance for Innovation, and uh, this is tripartite agreement. And uh, you may see here the example for cervical cancer. However, we we looked on three types of cancers. We started from uh, cervical cancer, thereafter we have uh, central nervous system and head and neck will be the next next one. So it's uh, it's uh, uh, it's important project which we are doing now uh, within oncological strategy. The next point is development of measures and indicators for centers operating for national oncological network because uh, we are at the final stage of the of the law about the formal establishment of the national oncological network with reference lenses levels and we are working uh, closely with other, with the societies and the experts about the preparation of measures and indicators of quality indicators for cancer centers uh, for uh, for this uh, for this network which uh, we uh, consider important for uh, fighting with inequalities, improvement of the uh, patient care about uh, going to the standards at, at all levels, and also uh, generally uh, it's important for patients to know this this uh, this quality quality indicator. So it's uh, it's a structure of the of the national oncology network which will will start being implemented next year uh, because legislation should be completed uh, at the beginning of 2022. Moreover, we uh, decided that uh, we need uh, on one platform to have a central pathology database, which can really help with uh, 
the reliable uh, assessment of the diagnosis of the cancer and also uh, with stage of the cancer. So it's uh, it's another another aspect. Uh, investing in research. This is another point. So. Uh, we have a uh, new uh, deity uh, as an agency of Ministry of Health Medical Research Agency, and uh, they uh, invested uh, a lot of funds into the scientific projects, mainly related to the non-commercial trials uh, until now. So it's clear improvement. And one of the major beneficiaries are oncology and pharmacology in this field. Uh, beyond the COVID, <laughs> uh, but the major major uh, projects are related to oncology and hematology, and this is very important because we have a uh, real uh, increase in the projects uh, for uh, academic trials, which can be uh, now performed in our in our country, uh, mainly oncology and. Uh, hematology, and this is the uh, number of patients which are predicted in the nearest year to be included in this uh, medical research agency funded clinical trials. Moreover, uh, agency also supported in the one of the calls clinical research support centers for clinical trials, and they also organized a specific call for uh, oncology clinical trial support centers. One of our branch in the is. Mm -hmm one of the beneficiaries of this uh, of this call so uh, generally uh, generally I, I presented you the vision of our national oncological strategy and now i will give the voice to professor marta Meinchuk about two specific parts so about the prevention thank you um, <clears throat> so the the second um, a second uh, um, scope of the national strategy, oncological national strategy, is decreasing cancer incidence through reduction of exposure to risk factors, uh, investing in education and primary prevention and lifestyle. And let me briefly tell you what are the expected results that we have uh, put into the strategy. Uh, they, they, they are challenging, but uh, we are going to um, do our best to, to achieve them. So first, uh, you know, the, the, the baseline for the whole, I mean, I'll just, uh, yeah, the, the base for the all um, actions within that scope um, is all, obviously the European Code Against Cancer. The fourth edition, we're waiting for the fifth edition, uh, which is going to be prepared within the Europe Speaking Cancer Plan. This is the, uh, the, the Polish version of it. I mean, this, uh, this green um, book that you see on, on the left of the slide. And uh, while we are um, uh, when planning any tasks, we are always uh, looking at the recommendations of the code. Um, and therefore, also the <clears throat> Uh, our expected results are also uh, organized this way. So first, reducing percentage of overweight and obesity among girls and boys, uh, age 11, 15. Uh, today we are observing almost 14% in girls and almost 30% in, in boys. And we would like to decrease these um, percentages by 2030 uh, to 10 among girls and 25 among boys. Uh, therefore, um, uh, then we have the, the, <clears throat> the challenge of increasing percentage of girls and boys age 15 who are declaring uh, not smoking or not using tobacco products. Uh, as we know that um, uh, the tobacco is uh, the, the biggest contributor to uh, cancer mortality, cancer incidence and mortality. Uh, so today, these percentages are uh, around uh, 87, 88, and we would like to increase them by four percentage points at least um, to achieve 92. Uh, we would like to focus on reducing uh, uh, overweight and obesity in adult populations. Today, we have over 40% in women and 60% in men, whereas we would like to decrease those percentages to 38 and 55 uh, by 2030. 
uh, reducing uh, prevalence of smoking among men and women, and uh, not just smoking traditional cigarettes, but just generally using um, uh, tobacco products, including those uh, you know novel uh, novel products. Today we have um, uh, you know every fifth woman and and every fourth, fourth man in Poland is is smoking cigarettes daily. Uh, we would like to decrease those um, those percentages to 15 percent among women and 20 among men. This is super challenging, but I'm going to tell you later what are our um, steps uh, that we have uh, undertaken towards this goal. And obviously, um, uh, we would like to also um, put some effort in reducing skin cancer incidence among adults. Um, and uh, today we have um, uh, around uh, 5.7 per 100,000 population, um, and we would like to decrease this to 5 per 100,000 by 2030. Um, there's also a, um, um, a challenge in a vaccination uh, against HPV. We will, in, in the strategy, there is, um, there is a goal set to 60% of girls and boys until 2028. Uh, also, we would like to expand the knowledge um, uh, about the European Code Against Cancer among um, health professionals. Uh, at least 50,000. Uh, we would like to train at least 50,000 of those health professionals until 2030. Uh, yeah, well, sorry. Uh, exactly. And these are those, um, those seven main goals. And now, very briefly, I'm going to tell you what we have already done under those, uh, under those, under those goals. So, uh, you know, where, where we want to increase um, awareness about the impact of lifestyle on cancer, uh, this is mostly educational programs and, and, um, um, and educational campaigns. Uh, there, there are a few big um, nationwide TV campaigns and, and internet-based campaigns, like, you know, spots, programs, uh, conversations with experts, text, graphics, and they are tailored to specific subgroups of population. Uh, one of those is, um, I'm planning a long life, it's like a, a very intensive cy cycle of uh, uh, TV spots and, and, and different conversations. Um, the other, for instance, was about counting uh, the real amount of sugar that, that is consumed uh, by, by the population. Of course, uh, this is towards the, the decreasing um, obesity uh, in, in among kids and, and adults. Uh, regarding the HPV vaccination, there is a plan that the government would final, finance those vaccinations so that, you know, make them more available. Um, currently, the works are in progress. Um, you know, it, it's a challenge as it is, but it's also a bigger ch challenge when we have COVID and all the discussions about vaccination against COVID. And then, you know, it's, it's a completely different matter, but the, the, the subject is very, uh, very real uh, in, in, in the minds. So, you know, lots of discussions are going on, but I hope that we will be able to start vaccinating uh, first girls uh, and then boys, you know, uh, early this year. Uh, there is uh, there are, there are, <clears throat> there are works going on on the healthy eating legislation. The sugar tax has been implemented. Uh, that there are works in progress regarding standards for meals at schools and children hospitals. Um, there, there, there are going on very intensive works um, in anti-tobacco legislation. So, uh, you know, the work at the, at the ministry at the moment, uh, there is the work on the whole modification of the <clears throat> tobacco-related diseases prevention program. And uh, this, this program is, I mean, the proposal has already been prepared and next week it's going to public consultations. And we are hoping very much that, uh, that you know, it, it will go later on smoothly through the parliament. Um, so uh, there was there is also a task of setting up a smoking cessation clinics in each void ships. Uh, working we're working on that. There's, there are also needs of some regulations to be done uh, regarding the obligatory questions on smoking status in medical interview in oncological hospitals and uh, obligatory adequate medical support uh, in quitting smoking. And, you know. In, in Canada, for instance, there is this great model where every patient is being asked about their smoking status, and every patient is 
is uh, being offered help and also uh, you know and and if 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 there, there is a need also medication and medication and it's free of uh, I mean they can they can get also medication for for free meaning the system is financing it we are obviously um, uh, not aiming as high but we at least would like to uh, have in every uh, oncological setting uh, like obligatory um, Questions about smoking status of the of patients, and at least referral to to a smoking cessation clinic or or the quick line. Uh, there is uh, there are works going on regarding increasing the price of of cigarettes because we know that you know 10 10 percent uh, of um, price increase uh, on, on on the tobacco package could bring four percent reduction in smoking prevalence. So you know it's it's a lot. Obviously, no one would ever. Uh, um, you know, um, um, <clears throat> about for uh, a ten percent increase in price it goes very very slowly. But our ultimate goal is to, uh, you know, to to eventually come with this, um, come up to this ten percent. <clears throat> and also, we uh, a continue uh, training of uh, medical uh, professionals in uh, treating tobacco dependence syndrome. Uh, we are doing uh, around 10 trainings a year, uh, and um, these are certified trainings that are needed also to contract, you know, the, 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 the service. Uh, and around 500 to 700 participants a year, uh, hoping to increase those numbers. Uh, and um, that would be either regarding the strategy, I would like to also tell you um, Two things about the very fresh initiative, initiatives. I don't know how much time do I have, not many, but I'll just give me a minute for that. So first, we are currently preparing, um, okay. we are currently preparing uh, an application for the EU, uh, um, EU call, the Healthy Lifestyles for All. Um, and we are looking for partners. This is purely uh, purely uh, primary prevention, healthy lifestyle promotion uh, program. Uh, I will be happy to share more details if any of uh, the countries would be interested in partnering here on the deadline is 25th uh, January. So, you know, it's a, it's a challenge, but I really uh, welcome uh, any interested um, the partner. And another thing, I will, there will, we will uh, hear more about that initiative, but um, let me let me just say that this uh, is an initiative of the Institute of, um, uh, of you know, the, 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 the Polish Cancer Institute, uh, Warsaw School of uh, Cancer Epidemiology and Prevention. We have started this project early this year in collaboration with National Cancer Institute uh, in the US and, and the Alliance for Innovation Foundation. Um, it's, it's, um, it's a school that it, it's, um, it aims at uh, expanding knowledge and expertise of researchers, students, health professionals in the area of cancer epidemiology and cancer prevention, including methodology, including um, implementation science, including some practical skills. Uh, the school um, is, has already uh, had one intensive two-day workshop in October this year that was uh, um, uh, that was uh, addressed um, for dentists, and we um, we have been discussing, talking, and teaching about their role uh, in uh, prevention and early detection of um, head and neck cancer, as well as care for cancer patients before, during, and after uh, cancer treatment. We had uh, over uh, 250 dentists attending the workshop and, and we had great opinions, but not only that, they also, um, they also showed us what, what other subjects that they would like to hear from the school. And we are expanding this. We uh, also wish to develop that project in other countries in our region where there is a lack of proper edu uh, education in, in, in epidemiology. Uh, I mean, uh, the chronic disease epidemiology. I'm not talking about infec infectious. Um, okay, uh, and one more slide about the third uh, scope of the national cancer strategy is the, pro is the secondary prevention. And of course, in Poland, we have in place three screening programs for breast, cervical, and um, colorectal. 
uh, but of course the um, participation is far from satisfactory. Uh, here you have, you can see um, the participation in the last um, uh, eight years uh, for mammography and cytology. This is the number of colonoscopies done in the past eight years. What we are, what we want to do within within the strategy, we would like to, of course, improve uh, this uh, participation um, indicators, and you know, by not only uh, you know, willing, um, not, not only um, you know, increasing awareness and and uh, you know, showing how important the participation is, but also uh, in um, improving the quality of of the uh, of the. Uh, checkups and, uh, for instance, uh, to, to, so let, let's let's <clears throat> let's move a step back. So today we have around uh, forty percent of uh, eligible women population is attending mammography screening. We would like to increase that number to sixty by twenty twenty four, and further to seventy five percent by twenty twenty seven. Whereas in cytology today we have only 17% of participation in, in cervical screening. I mean, this is uh, um, a shame because we know everything about that, uh, about cervical cancer. We have all the knowledge. We have screening, we have vaccinations, we have uh, very good treatment, and, uh, and we still have um, over, over three and a half thousand deaths from that cancer a year. I mean, this, you know, like in Northern Europe, it's not happening. I mean, there are no deaths. The, the students are coming to Poland to see the epidemics of cervical cancer in its third phase because they cannot see it in their populations anymore. We have all the tools, we are not using them uh, properly, and we have only 17% of participation, which, which we would like to increase to 60% by 2024 with different methods, also vaccinations, also liquid biopsy, also uh, HPV um, testing, um, you know, expand uh, the tools that are uh, effective uh, elsewhere, and to 80% in 2027. Uh, regarding colonoscopy, we have 18% um, of, um, of participation. This is partly due to different um, uh, design of that particular screening. Still, we would like to increase the numbers to 30% by 2024 and further to 45% by 2027. Uh, we have a very recent uh, fantastic results from, um, from a study that was um, that was done on, on um, you, you know, testing different approaches um, towards um, screen, colonoscopy screening invitations. And uh, we have very strong results published in gastroenterology uh, that adding the, the, um, the, the, the immunohistochemic test, the FIT test to colonoscopy would increase, uh, would increase the participation um, uh, substantially, and now uh, there are, um, uh, you know, discussions going on at the ministry to change uh, recommendations for the colonoscopy screening and adding this new uh, and, and a new, you know, including this new evidence, um, adding the fit test. Uh, well, of course, as it was also said here early, earlier today, we, we would like to introduce new screening programs. Uh, especially those targeted and early detection of lung cancer and prostate cancer, should the new methods arrive, should the new evidence come up, right? Once we have them, we could we could expand the screening programs, uh, and that would be it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, so we are collecting the questions. I would like to add only that. Uh, for HPV vaccination, of course, this is in line if uh, Europe's cancer detection plan. But uh, also, we had the first uh, first reimbursement for this vaccination, and we hope that next year it will be fully reimbursed of at, at least two uh, two ages of uh, girls. So we can we can start non obligatory but population based uh, uh, HPV vaccination in Poland as well. So the next the next speaker will be our comprehensive cancer, uh, cancer care in Latvia. And Dr. Andres, sorry for, for, for the pronunciation, Solkins. 
Oh, so not that, not that, okay. And uh, uh, Dr. Andres is um, uh, head of abdominal and soft tissue surgery department in the University uh, Hospital National Oncology Center, and he is also one of the persons responsible for accreditation pr process with OXI for a cancer center status. So the floor is yours. Good afternoon to everyone, colleagues. It's a great pleasure to be here and to speak in front of you. And uh, thank you very much for the uh, very uh, good organization of the Congress. And uh, thank you for the nice introduction. Uh, I can see there are some problems. I think it's PDF formats. You have to go to full screen presentation mode. Right. So, um, Yes, the PowerPoint could be It's open the browser. Yes, exactly. That's right. Okay, yeah. So, uh, my name is Andres Schalkins, and uh, I'm a surgeon. So, I'm working in the Latvian Oncology Center and uh, representing Latvia today. So, and um, today my topic is uh, towards comprehensive cancer care in Latvia. Okay, thank you. <laughs> That's right. So, well, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to say a few uh, words about Latvia. As you know, the Latvia is quite a small country uh, with the current population counting about 1.88 million. So, um, and every year, well, uh, if there are currently around 80,000 active cancer patients, and every year there have been about uh, 12,000 patients diagnosed with cancer, uh, approximately half of them are dying from the same diagnosis disease, so which is uh, 6,000 uh, cancer related deaths annually, and uh, which is around 21% of all deaths uh, in the country. Uh, so uh, I'm from Riga East University Hospital, which is the biggest hospital in Latvia, and actually it provides uh, uh, the cancer care for the majority of our population, and it's approximately 85% of the cancer patients that have been seen in Riga East University Hospital. And uh, well, uh, of course we know that so there is no like, ideal health system in the world, and uh, Latvia is not an exclusion from that. So uh, that's why I would like to highlight a few uh, weak points in our uh, cancer care uh, organization. But first of all, and one of the main uh, important points of the cancer registry, which you wouldn't imagine uh, working uh, uh, quality uh, cancer, uh, cancer system without this. So, and uh, historically the cancer registry was functioning quite well for decades, uh, but uh, the data was limited and a few years ago there was a decision taken uh, to uh, upgrade it uh, with the new data sets and uh, the responsibilities uh, from, from the uh, uh, disease control and prevention center has been uh, 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 transferred to the national health services and for the last two years the uh, registry was more functioning and was not able to produce expected outputs. So that's why we haven't got any uh, publications uh, for these two years. Uh, another problem is, as we know in many other countries as well, it's uh, the uh, very low coverage rates for uh, uh, for population cancer screening, target population cancer screening, and for instance, uh, the breast cancer uh, this year was 38%, cervical cancer 31%, and uh, colorectal only 8.2%. Of course, we all know this uh, this data could be affected by the COVID pandemics, and due to limited access to uh, diagnostic investigations and uh, restrictions in the, in the medicine as such, and uh, insufficient uh, 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 human resources. But if you look uh, at the numbers, uh, 
before the pandemic. So we could see some similar data. So which means there's probably some, something wrong with the whole organization of the cancer screening. And uh, the other thing is the data digitalization. So which means that uh, our data platforms are incapable to assure um, uh, data capture and exchange uh, corresponding to current needs. So um, uh, there are also no coordination in the quality assessments and uh, monitoring resulting in a huge variability in the healthcare uh, uh, quality provided by different healthcare uh, institutions across the country. Um, as well, we haven't got yet the cancer center with accredited cancer center or comprehensive cancer center. There is missing multidisciplinary approach in the, most of the district general hospitals and, uh, and sometimes even in uh, university hospitals. And uh, there is significant cancer care inequalities nationwide and, and across the EU. And uh, uh, there is lack of Ministry of Health managed national state research program. And the finally, so the, one of the cornerstones is the funding, which means from the very beginning, and that's why Ministry of Health is facing various challenges uh, while working with the limited healthcare budget, so which is 4.2% of GDP and it's far below the recommended minimum in Europe. But well, uh, Ministry of Health and National Health Service and uh, some uh, stakeholders have uh, uh, actually uh, provided the action plan for the better care and cancer, and they can separate in three actions the uh, creation and accreditation of cancer sector according to OECR requirements, and technical support instruments supported by DG reform project activities, and the implementation of the National Cancer Plan 2022 2024. Um, I'll, I'll, uh, in the following slides, I'll, uh, tell you about the details uh, about the uh, reaction. So the first of all, which is uh, quite a good news and a big step forward, better cancer care, is that the uh, Ministry of Health has nominated Riga East University Hospital to create a cancer center and to undergo the accreditation um, uh, uh, according to OECI requirements. So we are currently on step one, step two, the application has been accepted and waiting for the uh, signing the agreements. Along with this nomination of the health ministry has designated our hospital to provide methodological guidance in the field of the oncology in the future. And uh, we also have been discussed some future tasks for the hospital, making it its main um, uh, oncological um, uh, cancer treatment center. So this creation of complement uh, implementation of national clinical guidelines in the field of oncology, integrated governance and methodological management in the field of oncology and establishment of comprehensive cancer network. So another one uh, action is a technical support uh, instrument project uh, which was supported for DG reform activities. This uh, has been requested uh, for uh, structural reforms uh, in uh, cancer care and uh, cancer early uh, prevention um, uh, according um, to uh, according to uh, Europe's uh, cancer beating plan. And uh, during this activity, the international experts uh, with the a screen and uh, make any recommendations on uh, the structural reforms in the cancer registry, cancer screening, and the creation of the comprehensive cancer center. So this project has been accepted and started last month in November 2021, and it's going to last for 18 months. So the, the project's impact is uh, expected to contribute to the improvement of uh, the early cancer detection decrease in cancer mortality and incidence mm -hmm. in common cancer such as colorectal cancer, breast cancer, cervical cancer, and the increase in, in cancer survival by stage and uh, achievements of the cancer screening participation rate and coverage as per EU guidelines. The project outcomes would include uh, adoption uh, of action plans to implement population-based cancer screening programs and standard operating procedures manual for population-based uh, cancer registry and the quality assurance for both. Introduction 
of uh, tailored information system to monitor, evaluate, and improve the cancer screening program and to support population-based screening registries and commencing of comprehensive cancer care and the basic structure of the patient process. The project outputs uh, will include action plan for the improvements of cancer registration system and cancer registry data quality. Uh, uh, so it's, it will include the national action plan for the implementation of population based cancer screening, technical specifications for a new integrated information system to monitor, evaluate, and improve the cancer screening programs, and of course, the proposal for a roadmap towards time bound implementation of comprehensive cancer care and research infrastructure. Um, the, the success will depend on these projects on the on uh, many uh, things, but the main are the political commitments and support, sufficient funding, and of course, the efficient collaboration among the uh, key ministries. So, and the third action uh, is implementation of the National Cancer Plan for year 2022-2024, although I think it's a quite ambitious plan for this such a short period for two years, but the main goals of the plan is to promote the availability of human oriented and integrated healthcare services in oncology and to prevent the, uh, the premature death from the oncological disease. The aims of this plan is to encourage healthy lifestyles in society by education and of course raising awareness about the risk factors, improving the cancer screening coverage and the quality uh, improving the advanced uh, diagnostics and the treatments of the most common malignancies and ensuring the continuity of the healthcare by strengthening governance and promoting the efficient use of healthcare resources in the field of oncology. So uh, the, the, the aims uh, could be reached uh, with the uh, seven highlighted actions. So the first of all is reducing the risk factors such as smoking, uh, alcohol use, uh, decreasing, uh, uh, of course, increasing the physical activities and uh, uh, making awareness about the obesity. Uh, development of comprehensive state organized cancer screening, improvements of cancer treatment quality and availability, establishment of methodological management of cancer in Latvia, improving data platforms in healthcare infrastructure, availability of human resources and patient satisfaction. And the measures of the plan uh, aim to reduce the prevalence of oncological risk factors, increase the coverage, coverage of the cancer screening, and improve the care of oncology patients. And finally, develop and promote a multidisciplinary approach for oncology patients and the reduction in quality inequalities in treatment availability in outcomes, and of course, uh, developments in research uh, in oncology fields. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. And the next speaker, the next speaker will be Professor Josef Loving from Hungary, from Budapest, and Professor Oveli is uh, Deputy Director of uh, National Institute of Oncology in Budapest and also, as I found, the past president of Hungarian Society of Radiation Oncology, and uh, also the uh, member of the executive board and chair of accreditation committee of OECI. And the talk, Professor, is about, sorry, is about decades of Hungarian national cancer control plan, which is very important as what has been achieved and what are the further plans. So, yeah. Thank you very much. And first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to talk about this, this uh, uh, Hungary National Cancer Control Program. It's, it's a pleasure to be in Poland. It's always a pleasure to be in Poland. So we said, and it's a you know, decades, you know, the decades, because actually we started a long time ago, nearly 30 years ago, when the first National Cancer Control Program has been implemented in Hungary. And actually, you know, it was after the change from the communism, and some people here in the room remember communism, communist system, when there was not too much attention has been uh, given to, to, to cancer. There were some, but there was, you know, the changing of the system and, and, and you know, the economy was really much down. 
and the cancer mortality has been rising, you can see here from sort of defined, we are, we are talking about the 90s here, so it's steep rising, and we knew that the lifestyle of the people were very bad, high uh, rate of smoking, they drank a lot of alcohol, very really hot and healthy, very tasty, hungry, but unhealthy diets, uh, obesity is very high, they perform a sedentary lifestyle, stress and all working at that time, so this something has to be done because it was a kind of a tragic situation, so the so uh, and, 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 and we see that there are many obstacles to efficient cancer care at the time. There was no responsibilities defined. The system of health service provided for cancer were uncoordinated. We didn't have good information about all these kind of things. Uh, the competence and decision levels were not defined. Who did what in the <coughs> decision making? Of course, it means there's no planning and strategy uh, performed centrally. So the decisions were not taken. Uh, there was no control over the system, and of course, there was a lot of conflicts among the different players in the cancer care. So the National Answer is a National Cancer Control Program, and it was implemented in 1993 or started in 1993, according to the WHO guidelines. You may remember there was a lot of discussions in the Milan Congresses for the cancer care uh, directors, a lot of talks of the IR at the time. Uh, Peter Ball, for example. So it was the it was the answer, and actually it follows the the guidelines of WHO from the primary, uh, secondary prevention, early diagnosis, therapy, rehabilitation, palliation, uh, end of life, education, PR, stakeholder uh, involvement, uh, and in the case of monitoring, and I would like to highlight here because I think it's very important about national oncology structure is very important. So actually we were very Lucky in a way that a uh, professor and now Minister Miklos Kashva has been director of the National Institute of Oncology uh, since 1992, and then he became a Minister of Human Capacities in 2018. It means that he really worked on cancer, and then from recently as a minister, he had the real power to implement all what things. And actually, I just want to show that the National Cancer Control Program is so good, uh, which credits to the government, that, that actually. Additional national programs has been has been developed in cardiovascular, child health, mental health, musculoskeletal, and of course we had to do a, 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 because of the COVID infectology. So the the model of the of the, the cancer control pro, pro, program was a kind of model for other other very important diseases. Yeah. And actually, what about the private prevention? And in terms of smoking, there was uh, I, I just want to highlight some points because I don't have time to go through 30 years of, of, of implementation. Smoking, we have very important new law in the defense of no smokers. So it's not anti-smoking, it's defense of no smokers. It's a very nice expression, I think. So you know, bad commercialers, no indoor smoking, uh, even in transfer station and even uh, open stops, it's, it's, it's for, uh, for women to smoke. In the limiting access, there was six or seven times uh, the tax rate since that. So just as, 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 as uh, Professor Marsh told, gradually increase uh, tax. You, there is a network of, 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 of you know, uh, 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 tobacco shops. It, it has to be shady. Nobody can look inside. The children cannot see the tobacco and this kind of things. And actually, I don't say it, it's a kind of faster because uh, every year it's a half percent of degrees, which is not the best, but it's actually something. And now we are at 30 percent, which is still very, very high. Uh, obesity. Uh, we have a new public health product tax, we call the chips tax or sugar tax, and uh, what, what you call uh, it, it introduced, and the school diet program is introduced in, from 2012. Physical activity is now compulsory theoretically to do physical education every day in primary schools. They don't do it always, but nearly every day they do. Vaccination. HBV is compulsory since 2010 for the age of 12, and HBV is introduced uh, uh, for girls at 13 since 2014, and this year for boys. It's optional, but it's compulsory to recommend, and you have to uh, uh, undersign by the parents that they are they are informed about HBV and they refuse. But actually, uh, I have some data. It's 80 percent uh, ask for the HBV. For the, for the ladies. For the boys, I don't know at the moment. And of course, the reimburse is free. For the secondary screening programs, is uh, is uh, it started quite a long time ago. There was some, some you know, the network has been established, but it's not really a, 
a nationwide program. And so 1994, it became in the part of the public health program and it's become a population based screening. And actually we are, trying, we are planning to improve it to the HPV based uh, uh, screening from next year. The problem is the turnover is very low and hundreds there's a lot of private young general colleges that I think here. So the, 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 the official uh, uh, percentage of the pay, uh, of screen are, are very low, but there's a lot of opportunities to screening. So information is, is, is lacking some. There's a breast, uh, it started from 90, as a, as a model screening, and then the population the screening from 2002, and then the next step would be would, would be to extend, you know, the years to 70 because we see it would be important to to screen this 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 age group too. Colorectal, there were some model screenings, and it was actually part already to be introduced in 1993. There were some model screenings, and unfortunately, we had a lot of lot of debate on methodology. Uh, between uh, you know fecal blood and colonoscopy, so it, it's actually made a, a negative impact. But from 2018, for a FOB, it, it, it has been implemented as population-based uh, screening. And the lung cancer is very important because we have a very high uh, uh, mortality lung cancer. Uh, after you know the randomized trials, which shows very strong evidence for the screening, there was a, a pilot, and now we just re, uh, ended in uh, six weeks ago. We ended the, the implementation trial. Uh, it's a risk adaptive LDC for screening, uh, and hopefully we are going to have the data available uh, early next year. And we hope that the government will include this as a, as a it's, it's a big challenge actually to organize it. And actually, when we go to the to the to the to the, to the treatment uh, delivery, so if, if we thought I think uh, that before you invest anything to the treatment, you have to have a structure because if you have no structure, you invest that you could go away and it will, will not affect it. So there was actually a lot of discussion at the, at the time between OECI, between the IR, what the levels you know of, of, of our cancer centers, and actually we we, we followed at the, at the the logic at that time, which was, for example OECI, uh, 50, uh, uh, 10 or 30 years ago offered. So we now in Hungary we have a uh, a level system. There is one comprehensive cancer center. It's a it's a three B we call it, and which actually this is certified by the OCI because we think that if you say comprehensive cancer center, you have to have an outside uh, audit for that. You can say many people say, oh, we have a comprehensive cancer center, but very few are really uh, you know verified by the OCI, for example, the German system is uh, available. We have regional cancer centers. Uh, then we have cancer departments, some have three modalities, some only two, there are some, some units. It is very important that you have to have a cancer registry, and it was founded in 1999, it has some registry before, uh, so it has also some 25 or 22 years, and it's very important to have uh, a link to the GPs. And it's very important that minimum requirements uh, and the requirement uh, compulsory MDPs for all cancer patients has been implemented in 2003. Uh, if the patient does not discuss an MDT, actually the reimbursement can be uh, retracted from the cancer center. And this is the system. We have five regions in Hungary. There's Budapest and the other regional centers. And there are, you know, uh, 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 the secondary and, and the third level centers here. So the plan is to cover all, all of the country, you know, uh, with this kind of, let's say, network. So, uh, and the main elements what we had in that here, uh, 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 as a uh, as an improvement to diagnostic therapies, we have been always renewing uh, central protocols and guidelines. This is big renewals, of course, it's always changing. So the <coughs> guidelines, uh, a part of partial guidelines, are renewed uh, more frequently. Uh, there's a centralization to certain eye cancer mass centers, cancer health health providers, in order to obtain higher quality and shorter waiting lists. Uh, it's very important that we increase the capacity and reimbursement for molecular pathology, and the National Molecular Tumor Board has been established because it's very hard, far, hard to follow, you know, the precision that it does now. You need a very good structure to do that. Imaging has been improved uh, in order to have a short access to treatment. Minimum invasive surgery on board is widely uh, uh, practiced. Unfortunately, we couldn't get a robot actually for a long time, and this year we are going to have a robot in two weeks, uh, two robots in two weeks. They didn't sell it to Hungary, so we wanted to buy it and they didn't sell it. So that was the reason for years, uh, don't ask why. And uh, we have to, we are about to, to, to build a new uh, program for innovative drugs because the cost and financial toxicity is really significant here. And uh, radio trip was a very important thing because we had outdated equipment. There was four uh, new centers that have been established during the, the, the cancer control programs, and one uh, is going to establish in the next year. 
uh, we, for after round five, we, 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 we achieved a new reimbursement for the up-to-date technologies. It is very important, uh, though, that which is, which is ongoing, is to improve the IT technologies in, in, in oncologies. We have a kind of network and something like that, but there is more to come. For example, I don't want to tell, I can't tell all the, all the elements, but for example, we are going to have a national IT network for, for, for uh, MDTs. So all cancer patients who are discussed in any centers in an MDT will be in the central line, and it is a follow through, throughout the, the system. And it's very important that now we, have, we are really having increasing support for basic and fascination cancer research. It was quite lucky in the, in, in the recent years, so we were not very competitive in the system for cancer research. And education for oncology professional nurses, artists, physicians, physicists, psychologists, anybody who's here. And actually, do we reach any success with that? Because this next question, what happened in Hungary the recent years, and this, um, I'm sorry, this part in Hungary, these are the males and females, the incidence and the mortality in the, in the recent some 20 years uh, in Hungary. And what you can see that uh, the mortality is increasing, is still increasing, and uh, 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 the, the uh, incidence is increasing, and the mortality is just the same as males. And this is quite the same with the ladies. Uh, the uh, incidence is increasing, and the mortality is just the same. And if you look uh, together, uh, uh, males and females uh, together, it's quite the same. So the incidence increased in this, this 15 years by 31%, and the mortality remained the same. So actually, the mortal rate decreased with 11%. Uh, it should be further analyzed, this, this one, one number, but actually, we can say that still the incidence is a problem. So in the primary prevention, we have still a lot of doing in Hungary. The societies is not in a very good shape to respond to this, this kind of you know, intervention of private prevention. I think the same thing in Poland, maybe, and in other countries. In the mortality, I would say that it is really a very good sign that the, the, the mortality <coughs> decreased because of, of, of the screening program is not perfect, but it's working. And actually, because the uh, setting of this kind of network and system of oncology care uh, is it's a really sure that the efficiency of treatment increased uh, really significantly in the, in the, in the recent uh, 20 some years. So with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you for this excellent talk. So before the question and answer session, we'll have the last, last presentation about innovative approaches to implement national cancer strategy by Martin Hanchar and Michael Chokailo. Uh, so, uh, Michael Chokailo is a critical care physician at Hunter Holmes Magaya VA Medical Center at the ECU Health System. And uh, he's involved in cooperation in Poland for, for years because since 2014 he has been involved in Polish US innovation project signed between the US State Department and Polish government. Co founded uh, in 2017 Alliance for Innovation Foundation to continue work on increasing academic and business collaboration between Poland and Virginia. And um, uh, Dr. Marcin Kancharuk is, uh, has uh, led diversified cross functional teams and whole affiliates in leading on international companies. In more recent years, he has been also served as president of the Supervisory Board of the Polish Pharmaceutical Chamber. And uh, he serves as a board member of Health Group Think Tank, expert on innovation, National uh, Center for Research and Development, and executive partner, partner acceptance LTD. So uh, uh, it is it will be the short short talk about the approaches to implement national cancer strategies. Okay. Uh... Welcome, everybody. I think uh, I'm in London. Marcin is there with you guys. Uh, so uh, greetings from London. Uh, I saw sun for about 30 seconds this morning, and then it became typically London, and it's very gray. Um, what I wanted to start with uh, before I let uh, Marcin talk about the guideline process in, in Poland uh, is a little bit uh, background of our uh, foundation. So if we can go to the uh, first slide about us. Uh, thank you. I, I don't want to spend much time here, but just kind of say uh, who we are. So we're a nonprofit as registered in, in Poland and in, in the U.S., and I think that's the key element. Uh, I've worked on lots of national projects in, in Poland and in the U.S., 
And one of the things we've learned in developing uh, Alliance for Innovation was that you can't do things at a distance. So if we want to have collaboration with the U.S., we have to have a presence there. I think all of you have had probably previous experiences, whether it was just exchange programs with other universities and so forth. A lot of times there's a lot of energy up front, but if there's not somebody kind of dedicated to ma managing as a project manager, a project, things tend to kind of dwindle off. And that's a little bit uh, what I go into a lot of detail of, of what we've done over the years. Now we, we focus on three areas, on the science, on the culture and the business. Um, I just kind of want to focus on the science because of our, our topic today. And I think there's a lot of opportunities in oncology. And I don't, I don't want to not say mention about business because I think anybody who's been in academics realizes at some point you have to have money. You can't do research without money. You can't travel without money. Uh, and when we're even considering research, our R&D should be thinking about, well, how is this going to benefit society? And that also means thinking about the business aspect of it and how we're going to get there. Uh, so now I'm going to go over, I'll jump in in a few minutes, but I'm going to let Machin talk about the uh, guidelines after the adaptation process. Thank you, Mike. Uh, can I have a next slide, please? So some time ago, um, together with uh, Professor Rukowski and Professor Krzakowski, we met and discussed a need to accelerate um, guidelines development process in Poland. And we thought that engaging with such an organization like NCCN uh, might be actually very helpful. So the big question here was, could we find a model that is smooth, effective, and flexible, reflecting differences between two countries? Um, so um, immediately we set up a call with uh, NCCN leadership, uh, including Bob Carlson, who is a CEO of NCCN, and uh, we discussed the objectives on both sides, and finally, ultimately, we managed to clarify and align on a process that is called adaptation. Uh, so, um, since then, we started. Can I have the next slide, please? So, there was, uh, it's been uh, signed in uh, three parties uh, agreement between uh, National Institute of Oncology here in USA, uh, NCCN, and AFI. Um, Next slide, please. So this is a um, helicopter view of uh, what we um, piloted. So we said before we expand the cooperation with NCCN, let's pilot, uh, you know, uh, this cooperation. So um, as Professor Tusk mentioned already, there were some councillors picked up um, and we initiated a process. So the steps you see on the top um, basically took us from, you know, first talk to, on the right-hand corner, uh, publication on October 22nd uh, of Polish edition of Cervical Cancer uh, Guidelines. We are in a process of fine-tuning uh, CNS um, guidelines and head and neck uh, surgery. Um, next slide, please. Why would we believe that NCCN cooperation, uh, a cooperation with NCCN might be beneficial to, uh, to Poland, to a national council certificate in Poland? Well, first of all, uh, NCCN has a, a tremendous uh, resources uh, to um, develop guidelines and keep them updated on a regular uh, basis. So that's probably the first reason, but also the quality of standards are super high. And last but not least, um, the guidelines development is uh, firewall secured from any a conflict of interest, influence, or lobbying uh, from, uh, from the industry. So we believe that by partnering with NCCN, we bring to Poland highest possible uh, uh, standards. Next slide, please. So, Really, the name of the game is uh, with the international cooperation is the quality of people and the leaders, basically. So we had uh, uh, Polish leaders on the left side, US NCCN leaders, and um, in the middle um, uh, was AFI. And you may, whenever you face um, shortages in resources, busy daily agendas, other priorities, you may consider in your uh, um, international cooperation projects uh, finding an NGO, engaging with NGO 
which um, in essence stands as your back office. Next slide, please. So those are the two which are already uh, completed. Next one. And the next steps, uh, Mike, I'll turn back to you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to add uh, about that back office. Uh, that back office does uh, actually quite a bit, and that'll lead into the next steps. Because we keep we keep the motivation going forward, and uh, going back to what I said, because this was a partnership between the U.S. and Poland, uh, there's not a problem as far as a language barrier. But in each of your countries, I mean, the politics and the bureaucracy is going to be similar, but it's not the same. So having uh, us on the ground in Washington made a big difference because we can turn around the same day and resolve issues. And uh, that actually helps with uh, getting to the next steps because we were able then to accomplish this, in a, as you saw at a timetable, three guidelines in a three month, in, a, in about a five, six month period. And that built on a relationship between the US and the Polish side, which is not additive but it's actually exponential. So as, as far as the next step is, as you can see here, we're, we're doing the next guideline, but it also opened the opportunity for other things in patient advocacy and uh, in further cooperation. The other co cooperation, which is ongoing right now, was a cooperation with the National Cancer Institute. So we can go to the next slide. Actually, I can go to the next slide too. So the, for those of you who may not be familiar, the National Cancer Institute is part of the uh, National Institute of Health in the, in the US. So like uh, as one of your institutes or ministries uh, under the ministries in any of your countries, and uh, they, they do most of the cancer, you know, the federally funded research in, in the US. Uh, and you can see here, I'm not gonna go through all the points, but the we identified early uh, areas of potential cooperation. So what, what that did is we, we, we had what the expectations were from both sides. And because we had a success with these guidelines, it's much easier now, for example, we've been meeting on a regular basis with NCI and people from Marish Podoshka Curie Cancer Institute on a, on a new research project. Uh, another thing that opened up in November, as you'll see here, data management and sharing. I think this opened a, a new opportunity and I listened to a lot of the, the talks uh, this, this morning and uh, I would highly recommend one of the strengths for the whole CEE region is your ability moving forward with data. Uh, I know everybody wants to focus on research and everything, but data is the new gold. This is data, this is the gold in California in the 1800s. Uh, this is gonna provide you with, with uh, great opportunities. Um, one of the things that came out with this NCI cooperation, we can move uh, to the next slide, is uh, the formation under the leadership of uh, Professor uh, Marta Manchuk is this uh, new Warsaw School of uh, Epidemiology and, uh, and Prevention, the Cancer Prevention. You might think, well, what does the School of Cancer Epidemiology and Prevention you know, kind of do toward my research and everything uh, else that we're working on, on guidelines? Uh, I would say it's a very pivotal uh, you know, idea to have something that can concentrate the resources, not just for Poland, but for the whole seat region that opens the door for further collaboration with U.S. entities, not just NCI and NCCN, but other federal entities, uh, and also international collaboration, because it, it creates a focal point for, uh, for collaboration based on already 10 years of partnership between NCI and, and, and Poland, uh, thanks to our supervisory bar board chair, George Handy, which in the last two years has grown exponentially. Uh, so the first lecture here uh, I, I heard uh, was already, I'm not going to go into detail, was with the dentist. You might think, what does that have to do with anything? It's the relationship building. Unless you have that relationship built and, and the trust on the both sides, you can't go to the next step. So the, this Warsaw School is at the beginnings, but it opened up tremendous opportunities. Now it's left up to you know, the leadership of uh, you know, Professor Manchuk to, to grow this. And I think this can grow on a regional scale very quickly. I would go to the next slide. 
uh, here just to identify again the, the partnership between uh, the, the Polish side and, and the US side. And again, uh, we are serving as Marcin eloquently called uh, as, as the back office, but also as, as the moderator between two, two, two sides and also as the cheerleader for both sides to make sure that everything moves forward. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, here you can see what some of the uh, uh, advantages of uh, this Warsaw School can do. I think I, I've heard a lot of people use the same terminology in their pres presentations about developing national guidelines, sustainability, reproducibility. I think you can take the lessons learned that was presented today by Professor Rutkowski and, and the rest of, of the development in Poland and why reinvent the wheel. You, you can take that, adopt it to your own country. Uh, we, are, we are happy to help facilitate that. And I think we, in essence, have a turnkey solution for you. Now, it have to be adapted to, to your local needs, but I think we've proven in, with the Polish experiment that that can be done. And it's not going to take 10 years, but it's going to take months, as long as there are strong leaders on both sides. I will go to the next slide, please. And uh, this is just to identify and to summarize where we can help facilitate. And trust me, and uh, I'm a, as Professor Rakulski said, I'm an ICU physician. So I've been practicing clinically for 25 years, working on, on lots of these projects. And as long as there's good partnership on both sides and the motivation stays, and we have somebody to, to, to control the project moving forward, then we can have success. And I, I think the way I'd like to leave is uh, to say that uh, where you are experts in cancer, we, we are experts in delivery and success to make sure that you achieve your goals. That's where we are as, a, as an NGO. And Marcin, if you have anything else to add. No, thank you. <laughs> all right, then, then, uh, then I, that's all I think we have from our side. And uh, I know we have uh, the Q&A now uh, after our session. So I, I would thank everybody for uh, you know, listening. Thank you very much. You are perfect on time. And that's true that we have a couple of questions from, uh, uh, from uh, uh, online. Uh, and uh, are any specific question from the audience here? Oh, okay. Professor, yeah. it's a very small question, Professor Machuga. Uh, maybe I missed, but I didn't see a specific ac action about alcohol consumption. Is is there in, in, in the program in Poland? In, that would be, uh, just because because in Hungary uh, it's a point in Hungary that's part of the house. It's not a not a question, but it's you know it's a, because I would like to see your experience on that. Well, of course, it's an important problem uh, in our population too, and the tobacco and the alcohol attributable um, <clears throat> incidents and mortality is, uh, you know, big. But uh, and of course, it's uh, one of the recommendations in the in the code. So our actions are also uh, around. Um, around um, raising awareness about the, this risk factor, risk factor, but we have uh, a separate agency in Poland that is dealing with uh, with alcohol, and they have their man mandate to do that. Uh, so I, I believe we don't have a specific. Uh, no, it was it was generally included in the health lifestyle. But yeah, it's, it's, but, it's but not, not a specific not... indicator. That's true because it's. It's covered by the specific agency in Poland, so we didn't, exactly. we didn't want to doubling the tasks for, for, for the national economic strategy, but of course it is a problem. <laughs> so <laughs> if you want the honest answer. <laughs> okay, so uh, Professor Majok, uh, it's a question also for you, so, so you do not give up with the, uh, with the microphone. Do you consider to go with the educational activities regarding cancer prevention to the early stage of education as preschool or grand school? Uh -huh. Yeah, actually, you know, research show that, um, that uh, um, healthy education is effective uh, even when you start 
um, um, at the age of four. So obviously, um, uh, preschools are should be should be included in the activities, and they have been so far, and they are planned to be. Uh, for instance, in the project uh, that we are planning uh, within the EU program, when we are going to train uh, those health ag agents um, of uh, of a change, of a lifestyle change, um, among them there should be also um, the preschools teachers um, in order to give them, you know, uh, not only knowledge but also materials and and some uh, and some uh, some help so that they can also uh, run uh, education uh, in preschools, absolutely. Okay, thank you. There's a question to me as well, that maybe maybe for the best. So uh, uh, Dr. Anders Tromke is, uh, what about the access uh, to the innovative therapies in Latvia? Do you have any problems with implementation of your innovative therapies for patients? How you deal with HDA process? This is the first, first question. Uh, well, that's the correct uh, question, so because the access to the innovative treatment and biological agents in Africa is quite limited, and it's uh, probably due to funding. There have been, um, uh, in the recent uh, cancer plan, there was requested, um, uh, I may be wrong, that's more than 100 million, but the financial ministry said it's actually, they can provide only 30%. So that's why we have to choose uh, what medication we should include in the treatment. So the accessibility to the innovative treatment is quite limited. That's correct. So this is definitely one of the points of the inequalities in Europe. So it's <laughs> main point to take yeah. now. And, and the second the second question, uh, uh, you mentioned about the uh, in your cancer plan about this uh, strategy for in increasing the screening programs participation uh, have you found what is the specific level of the uh, screening programs uh, uh, participation as a success of national cancer program because of course it's increased it's increased but increased and means as you mentioned as it was mentioned by uh, professor Mindro, five percent or go to the 20 or more percent increase so how 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 you deal with it well we actually haven't pointed the exact number that we have tried mm -hmm. to reach but so we know that the organization of all the process is wrong so that's why uh, we uh, supported the technical support instruments and the project driven so we would like to investigate so what is the problem and have some recommendation from the informational experts I understand so first investigate exactly. what is the real number and thereafter to to make the indicators thank you thank you so the next question is to to Joseph. so uh, after, there are also two questions. So after a decade of existing cancer planning in Hungary, could you give some other countries recommendation how to implement cancer strategy effectively? Oh, it's... <laughs> so, but I would love to. I would love to know it. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you for that question. So we can stay here overnight. So I have to cancel my flight back. So actually, yeah. The the, the first thing that you have to you have to have a, a kind of expert plan on that that will involve all the stakeholders in the, in, in the planning. Mm -hmm. The next thing is, I'm just very short, of course, you have to have some regulations or something, you know, that imposing the plan because if it's, it's a very free, I'm not against democracy, but, but you have to, you know, some kind of plans, some regulations, which is shared by authorities. So there should be an authority there uh, in, in there. However, without the motivation of the stakeholders, especially the healthcare professionals and sometimes social care professionals, without the motivation of, of, of them, it's, that doesn't work. And of course, you have to devote uh, the, uh, the appropriate financial resources to that. And I know we have already mentioned it's, you know, it's a kind of also involves some politics, which makes it sometimes not very easy, uh, you know. And the, and the final thing is that you have to be very strict and clear on monitoring on, on, on the project. And in, in case you see some on the, on the monitoring results, which, which, which really are a problem, you have to correct it. So that will be very, very shortly uh, about the success uh, about implementing it. Uh, Thank you, but you really yeah. mentioned the, the, the crucial point. Thank you. And the second question is, are you aware what is the percentage of HPV vaccinated girls 
because it's not obligatory, but reimbursed as understood in, in yes. Hungary. Yes, how is so going it, 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 it's compulsory, as I told, to, to inform the parents and they have to sign with the website to the client. And uh, uh, from the, uh, the, the, not the girls, but you know, we have now 2014, so every year, the 13 year old girls are offered and it's 80 percent so it's very very yeah. good it's much higher than expected i don't have you know boys has just been started uh you know this year so i don't know about the boys uh, but, but we are you know especially now in time of the covid that's so high refu refusal rate of the covid vaccination it's a miracle i hope that it's going to decline by this covid thing you know that the, the parents uh, realize that, okay that's a vaccination too God, what happens in there? So I, I, I hope that, but it, it was unexpectedly high. So it was, I think it was quite managed. It was quite accepted. You know, dying of cancer is maybe a, a, a bigger threat for somebody dying of COVID. You know, you may deny the existence of COVID. It's, it's not very easy to it's traditional to deny the existence of cancer. Maybe, maybe that's the reason. Thank you. And uh, are there any other questions? Not so. Oh, okay, so. Uh, a question to you, uh, Professor Urkowski. Um, you, you presented some very nice data on, on the relative survival in Poland of breast and melanoma. Do you have the same data for all the major cancers? Yes, we have for seven, seven let's say the most prevalent cancers, so lung, colon, uh, prostate, uh, of course, for, for, from uh, from open report, so with this new technology, with new tools, but from uh, our national country registry, we have data for all types of cancer except uh, except uh, skin cancer because they are usually not included. But but we have and uh, the largest increase was for prostate cancer, cancer and cutaneous melanoma. We are still not satisfied for gynecological cancers. We are not satisfied for lung cancer. So uh, I gave just examples. That, that's great. And so continuing on, on the sort of cancer registry pathway, where are, where are you on, 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 on the journey then of, of completeness towards yeah, in this cancer, is, this towards is, staging, yeah. data, staging data in particular? The major problem is, as, as you guessed, that this is staging data because, of course, now we have a good cover, uh, coverage with the completeness of the, the population in terms of recognition of the cancer, uh, new cancer incidents, but the problem is with real uh, stage. So this is why we uh, want to include from next year uh, on the joint platform uh, of the Ministry of Health the pathological report to cover cover at least initial staging for the patient. So this is, this will this will help. Thank you. So the, the, the question is also to Michael and Martin. Uh, and for me as well, but this will be at the end. Is it possible to expand the NCCI and NCI partnership to regional level? This is the first uh, question. Yeah, regarding the, uh, this question, I do not think that uh, it would be an issue for NCCI and ESLA. Um, there is a need uh, in some neighboring countries. We can help and facilitate uh, the communication and this engagement, absolutely. Okay, and what is what can uh, the uh, Central Eastern Europe region contribute to global oncology? Oh, it's again <laughs> for overnight. <laughs> so. Well, I, I think across the region, you know, we face, uh, we continue to face many challenges, which helps us um, not to become. Um, uh, or face complacency. So uh, in a tough environment, you need to reinvent yourself. And uh, I think we are um, across the region really good and finding the solutions. Uh, that's one thing. Second thing, uh, I think that the great asset of uh, across the region is also, you know, the capabilities and really well-educated human resources, medical um, staff that can produce highest possible quality data, uh, which is essential for research. And there is third angle, which I think is so important, is IT and healthcare. I mean, we have very capable IT specialists. And the future of medicine, uh, I mean, we cannot escape from artificial intelligence, augmented reality, VR. 
And this is certainly a third puzzle that from the international perspective cooperation, I think, uh, would be very attractive uh, to any partner globally. Yeah. Thank I, you. I, I would I would just add, if you can hear me, uh, I think yes. if if, uh, if the region after this summit will work together, you have an economy of scales that would never be achieved in the US or even in the NHS system here in, in, in England. So I, I think you have an opportunity there to, to create something with uh, regional data uh, and that, that could show uh, not just outcomes, but also could be a, a platform. As I said before, data is gold. It, data is what the pharmaceutical industry is looking for. Data is what, what device manufacturers are looking for. I, I think you have a, a, you know, a large scale population. And uh, like Machin said, I think everything is going into the cloud. Everything's going AI at this point, um, including projects I'm working on. So if, if Poland and everybody else can get together and, and, and create like a data platform and registry, uh, you would have uh, the next three or four generations of oncologists have more than enough work. Okay, Simon again. Can we ask for that? I apologize that this is going to be more of a, a statement rather than a question, but <laughs> or rather a plea, uh, because especially to the Central and Eastern European uh, nations gathered here. In respect of UNCAN, uh, one of the work packages actually, which is being led by my dear colleagues in Hungary, is going to be about mapping the cancer research uh, capacity and capabilities in Central and Eastern European countries. That work won't kick off until after June, but it's a, re a really important mapping project to get right the platform uh, for, for, for future uh, ca cancer research sponsored by and encouraged by the EU. So please engage with us uh, uh, as, as we, as Hungary and, 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 and OECI will uh, you know, do online questionnaires and then come and visit, because I think, as Tid Albrecht said a few uh, hours ago, actually the visitation online and just knowing in a granular detail, where are the research groups in each member state? What are they working on? What are the papers they're publishing? What are the core facilities they have? What are the clinical trials that, that are being run? All, all this stuff will, will, will be needed. So, but also to try and reduce the, uh, I think the basis of this particular work package within LCAN is about reducing inequalities. And some of the inequalities, including in research capabilities and capacity. So what are things that can be shared across, across Europe more and more equitably? Uh, and that, that includes probably finan financially as well. But what are the twinning and teaming uh, 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 initiatives that can be uh, that can be achieved, which will improve the co-working across member states in cancer research? So I'm sorry, that's a bit of a, a, an advert, but sort of a for uh, a looking forward to to our if I may. Okay, thank you. And the next question is to me. The primary one of the primary goals. This is not the primary goals, but one of the primary goals. An excellent question, by the way. Of the national cancer plan in Poland is to increase the five year survival rate at the end of the treatment. Researchers usually use the definition survival rate. Five years after diagnosis is the indicator of five year survival rate used by other countries in our cancer plan. Is it possible to calculate in terms of for, for SARCO? Would it be possible to compare this data with other countries? So if the, in the every report, of course, we'll present the different data, not, not the only one. But we decided to put this, uh, this complex indicator after discussion with the Department of, uh, of Epidemiology and also with our, uh, with our analytics. Uh, but, it may uh, indicate the, the patients who are treated radically. And this is also very important because in the, in the nearest future, of course, with all these, our plans, uh, the increase of this indicator will be, will be important. So of course, uh, with all reports which we prepared as opening report and also the, uh, uh, the interim analysis, of course, all other indicators will be also presented, this is obvious. But this is one of the goals, and with these uh, new tools, analytic tools, we, are, we, are, we can tell when the treatment was done and what is the survival after the treatment. So this is, this is 
may be more challenging, but the interesting complex, complex approach. So this is why we put it also to the plan. Okay, so thank you, it's perfect.